Okay, greetings peeps. Today we are going to be looking at a TRLE, our first TRLE on my YouTube channel. Uh, this is called the Egyptian Dream. It is in the Hall of Fame on TRLE.net. Uh, the reason for this is it's uh, actually called Egyptian Dream Tutorial. Now, uh, basically the creator of this game, uh, Jaco Luis called Pascal, he um, made this to help TRL builders basically how to um, put puzzles together, create traps, and generally just build a level. This is only a short one level, um, but it is really well done. The um, traps and puzzles in this are um, at some points really, really hard, and he's managed to incorporate certain elements from other games such as Tomb Raider 5. So I'm going to head Go ahead and start a new level. So as you can see, Egyptian Dream Tutorial up top. Now if you turn off the um, volume tricks, um, you will get the fog effect, but um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and play play the game. Um, that is one part of his tutorial that he does show you how to do is create the fog effect. So. Okay, so we uh, run out of this little cave in there, uh, into this wide open area with a couple of obelix. So the first thing we want to do is head over and uh, you can see little, this isn't water, this is uh, fog and it would come up better if I uh, had my settings up correct, but um, I've got them just right to uh, record so I'm going to leave them be. Now if we head up here, up these steps, we've just picked up the crowbar and we're going to head in here and go to the right. There's nothing to the left, so we just go to the right. We're going to drop down here and pick up our first flares. And we enter this big room. Uh, I love the decoration. He's he's done this really well. This does actually remind me of um, mosques and the such that you can see in Egypt today. I think he's put a lot of thought into this. So I'm going to push these buttons. I'm just going to open this door two side jumps and a run forward should put you exactly right um, in line up with those buttons. Okay, so out on these balconies, I'll have a little look around. You can see that there are two um, movable pillars and if you look closely you can see two uh, corresponding pads on the floor for each pillar. Now the aim of this is to open that door, but if you also look there's some stars on that platform there, that means that's a spike trap so you don't want to stand on there. Also we've got a long fall if we mess this jump up. So the first thing I'm going to do is push these two pillars. It's just easier to push them first because you have to have the corresponding one on each side before anything will happen. You can't push and then pull this because nothing will happen. So it cuts scenes you to the door so it tells you which one that's doing. Okay, so if we walk over to here, this is just a jump and grab, and you'll land safely on that tile. And then a jump and grab, get up here. And the doors open. Now we can start moving these back. So the next thing we're going to do by positioning these pillars is to raise the platform where those spikes are so Lara can hop over safely. Uh. Uh. Okay, so this jump here is different from the last one because that block is now too close so um, you do want to be careful with this one just a hop and grab with a few steps back from the ledge should do it and this one is a run jump and grab yeah don't get um, tricked by those it's uh, one lot of jumps one way to get there and another lot of jumps to get back just space yourself out by the tiles, you should be absolutely fine. Uh. 
anyone else amazed at just how strong Lara is? This thing must be like five times her size. <laughs> okay. So now that block over there is raising, covering those spikes. So just hop and grab to get on this tile. And then walk to the edge, and this is a run, jump, and grab. We saw the spikes try to get you through the box, but you're too high up now. Okay. So now there's a little crawl space up here, and you can claim your first secret. The reason we picked up the crowbar is it has no other purpose in this whole level other than to claim the secrets, which are these gold beetles. So if you're not worried about secrets, you don't have to actually get the crowbar at all. There are one or two uh, slight glitches in this level, like just there, Lara wouldn't... Um, she would crouch, but she wouldn't crawl. So you just have to basically reposition yourself and she'll go ahead and do what you need her to do. Okay, so we come into this room, a couple of Medusa heads on the wall. Now we can see that this is a puzzle, fairly straightforward. You're just pushing all of these little idols forward twice so that the colour that they are uh, represents the coloured tile they need to be on. So really, really simple. It's uh, quite generous in there. Uh, the fact that he gave us a nice simple puzzle to begin with. Now as we look over here I am just going to show you this pedestal. You can see there's a wine skin on there. Uh, any of you that have played Revelations will uh, recognise that and that is the puzzle in a few moments. As I said, I really like the detail you've gone to in this um, TRLE. It, it does actually seem really believable. The spaces aren't absolutely huge, so you don't feel completely lost. But there are moments where you do feel like you're in a bit of a maze as well, which is quite nice, I think. There's uh, a, a lot of uh, intricate detail in this, so uh, a, a lot of uh, care and attention has been taken. Okay, so that trap door down there is just going to open. I like the fact that he's changed Lara's clothes. It's uh, quite nice to know you're in a custom level when she's not wearing the uh, green and brown of classic Queen Ada. Okay, so we're going to hop down here. This fan is going to slowly push us forward. You can swim as well, so... Right, get up onto these steps and draw your guns quite quickly because we're going to You can't get you in the water. Not here. However, this is the cool thing. He can deflect bullets if you um, do decide to go out of the water. He will deflect bullets. Okay, so we're going to pick up this jewel he dropped. This is uh, what's called in the level the jewel of Apophis. Now, just a quick note for the Egyptology fans out there: um, Apophis is actually a Greek god. Uh, this was a mistake made by Stargate in that they named their snake god Apophis. The Egyptian god um, of the snakes was Apep. He's exactly the same as Apophis, it's just um, the names differ from Egyptian to Greek myth. So, uh, yeah, Egyptian god is actually called Apep. Now, if we run forward to here, we see another wine skin on a pedestal. This, uh, sorry, water skin on a pedestal. This is not the same one. The one we were looking at before is behind that block. As you can see, there's a couple serpent heads on the uh, walls. And that's where the gems of Apophis go. So, we'll climb up here. A couple of dogs, they're not going to attack us just yet, but they are going to come alive. And we can see the scales from the Weighing of the Heart ceremony. Basically, uh, again, a little bit Egyptian mythology, the um, little pot represents the heart of the deceased, and the feather 
is a feather of mat, which represents truth, balance, law and order in the Hall of the Gods. So if your heart was pure, it would weigh the same as the feather. If it was not, then your heart was considered unpure and you were eaten by a goddess called Amut, who was half uh, crocodile, leopard and hippopotamus. We will be meeting Amut a little bit further in this level, so bear that in mind. You know, that is not a creature you want to tangle with. But basically, we've got a little clue here behind the scales, uh, the little pyramid with the uh, moon phases. As you can see, the second moon phase is lit up, so that's indicating that we need two litres of water. So that's how much that feather weighs, is two litres of water. Now, this star uh, tiles that we're sta standing on uh, is again a spike trap. Now, so far we've only got a um, small water skin that contains three litres. Now we need two, and we can't pick and choose how many litres Lara puts in those. So what we're going to do is we're going to climb up here. And this is the little trapdoor switch. So we open that by jumping up and grabbing. Walk forward, jump up and grab the ladder. And we're going to go claim the second jewel of Apophis so we can get that second wine skin. And now we can hear the uh, hounds down below us. So jump forward, there is a little med pack here. Now some parts of this level you are going to have to use a med pack. Um, as you can see I can't actually see my health bar even though I draw my guns because of how my computer is set up. So um, yeah, you've got to be careful uh, with health in parts of this level. Okay. Now our little safety block has gone down because the hounds have been raised, so we're just going to drop down the guns and start running. They again more common that you are selecting that you can here. Damage and I still Okay, so they've been fried. Headbutt. Okay, so let's uh, throw these jewels of Pothis in here. Now, um, as I was saying to you earlier, the beetles represent secrets. There are three secrets in this level, and a couple of them were really well hidden. That first secret was sort of a, a teaser secret, um, in the sense that if you're actually paying attention, you'll see, you see that crawl space quite easily. Right, okay, so we've now got that other wine skin. Jump into the water, and we're going to fill the large wine skin up. And we're going to leave the little one and we'll see why in just a moment. Okay, now before we go anywhere near that pot, because we don't want to risk setting off that spike trap, is we're going to combine the 5 litre water skin with the smaller water skin. Now the smaller water skin contains 3 litres, the big one contains 5, but because we've combined that, that's left 2 litres in the larger wine skin, which is what we need. Now, as I say, if you do get this wrong, those spikes will come up. Now, you can't just activate this by pressing control, see, I'm, I'm, or action button. I'm pressing it, and nothing's happened. So you have to go into your inventory and actually select the wine skin. You'll hear it pour into the jar. Okay, no scales are now set even. Okay, we'll slide down the slope. And turn around once you're in the water to claim a small med pack in the corner here. Okay. 
Now these dogs have just come to life, but again, standing there to be completely stupid without ever having to really worry about it. Okay, so that's the water we've just come from. If you look up, you'll see uh, that there is grates up there, or at least a passageway up there. And if you look down, there is a grate in the water as well. That is the ultimate goal, is to open that grate. Now, if we go down the steps, you can see to the left and the right of here, there are pull switches. But they are protected by flames, so you can't pull them yet. But also, on all these little pedestals are little receptacles, snake's head receptacles. So, obviously, we need to collect another few jewels of the poppers. So, if we climb, climb back up, turn too quick. So, if we climb back up, we'll notice that there are three switches here blue, red, and gold. And up these steps, we have some doors. Okay. Now you'll notice that there's three dots on each of these the, and an arrow. That basically indicates which way you need to read the panels on the other wall. So, And you have to do them in order. You have to do them left to right. If you try doing um, these two doors before you do that door, she'll um, hear a little bit of heart music and catch it on fire. So you don't want to do that. Okay, so let's look at door number one. The arrow is pointing up, which means you have to do the tiles in reverse order. So you're starting at the bottom and you're moving up. So it's yellow, blue, red. Okay, so just very quickly before we push that button, if we climb up onto this pedestal here, we will find a little journal. Now, this is the Sphinx's map. And if we examine this, it gives us all details on bearings that we need to take. Now, I'm not going to bore you by keep popping this up, but basically I'll tell you when you need to refer to these maps. So, one is about the third floor doors, in which direction we need to take those in. And the second is about some floating platforms. Uh, it's a puzzle, basically, and um, if you get it wrong, you die. There's a lot of instances in this level where if you mess up even once, even slightly, instant death. So I really do like this um, puzzle because of that. Okay, so our first combination is yellow, blue, red. So let's go ahead and... I will also, um, as usual, leave some time maps in the comments if someone is look, uh, finding a particular puzzle hard or can't find a secret. Look in the comments and it will have the time indication of where it is in my tutorial. Okay, so that's open the first gate. So we're going to come in here and we're going to push this button. We're going to have a little Egyptian elevator raise us up to where we need to go. Okay, so there's no enemies in this room, so you don't need to worry, but we can see we've got another uh, colour puzzle in here. Now, this green one here is the only one that's far away from its tile. Its tile is over here, so we need to move that one first. But before we do that, we're just going to go into end rooms and it just poke about a little bit. Now you see that there is these meshes here, that basically means that the elevators in the corresponding rooms uh, down below are going to go up further. So this is what they meant by third floor. This is the first floor, and there's a, um, the second floor is the middle chamber, and then you've got the third floor. So just bear, bear that in mind as you're playing through this level, that you're going to need that Sphinx's map for that third door, which is the third floor. Okay. Now, because there's not a ledge on the other side of this block, you can only push it. So bear that in mind as well. You can't pull these blocks unless there is a pile behind you that Lara can stand on. But you can push them.
Now, when she gets the correct colour on the correct uh, tile, the little pyramids above the tiles are going to start spouting out energy. It doesn't seem to hurt Lara, so you don't need to worry about that electrical noise. Just uh. carry on as usual. on the tile. Uh. Okay, over that buzzing noise you guys might be able to hear some huffing and puffing. Uh, those of you who have Today's revelations will recognise that. That is an enemy you cannot kill. Uh, that's why I was saying earlier that we will need to use some of our med packs in this because there's uh, several instances of instant death, but there's also uh, force damage that you can't avoid unless you are very, very quick. And as I say, because I can't see my health bar, I'm not going to risk it to his death yet. One hit from the guy upstairs, and it's pretty much lights out there. Ah. So. the uh, gem of the process in that glass pyramid right there. There we go, nice big explosion, and on here is the first jewel of a pot of weed. Now because we just picked that up, this grate has just opened it. So we're going to save the roll and fall into the water. Now this water is exactly the same way we got into the pool last time. So I'm going to just go ahead and save it real quick. And we're going to... Uh, basically, let's go put a jump of this in and just show you what this does. Okay, so pop that into the receptacle, hop up, pull the switch, and that's going to show you the trap door in the water. So that basically tells you what these switches do. Nice little flyby. So let's go put the next combination in. Now, the arrow, if you can see that, is pointing down. So that's blue, red, yellow. Now, I proved on my live stream that if you put blue, red, yellow in as your first attempt on these switches, harp music plays and Lara catches on fire. You may think you might be able to run to the water, but even in the water, it's an, it's an eternal flame, so uh, you can't put her out by putting her in the water. No matter if you chug med packs or anything, no, she, she's dead. <laughs> okay, so we've got another elevator. We're going to pass the puzzle we've just done. Coming to this new one now. Just be aware again, guys, that you nothing in these little rooms 
but you can sort of see the elevator. Uh, to your left here, we're going to meet a mutt. Hello, a mutt. Now, even in Revelations, I've never fought a mutt. Um, I was about to call her this guy. A mutt is actually a girl. She's so pretty. Um, so I've no idea how many shots she takes. But anyway, we're going to go in here and get the shotgun. So that's not a good indication of how many shots a mutt takes. Um, you should have six shots of the shotgun. We've not picked up any ammo for the shotgun at all. There is no ammo in this level. You get six shots. Don't waste them. Okay, we can see another um, trap door here. You can't go through here yet, but that leads back to that water. Now, and if we look through this door here we can find the police switch that is our ultimate goal. Now we've got another set of scales. If we look here you see that the pyramid is on the fourth moon phase. Now those of you are thinking oh hold on a second we've got odd numbers of uh, water flowers. You are correct to assume that. What you need to do is we've already got three liters in there we need to use the big wine skin Okay, and we need to, my apologies, we do not need any in this little wine skin. We're going to take that out, we're going to use, uh, sorry, combine that with the smaller wine skin. So there's now 3 litres in that, we're going to use that 3 litres as well. Okay, so that was the three liters we had from the last puzzle, and the new three liters gone. Don't need those. But now we're going to combine it a second time. So there's now two liters in there, and there is only uh, no liters in there. So we can still fit a liter in that one, no liters in that one. So now we're going to hop back in the pool and no. use the large wine skin. Yes, Lara. So there's now 5 litres in the large one, 2 in the small one. So we're going to combine once more the large skin with the small skin. We're just going to put 3 litres in the little one. For any of those who are good at math, 4 litres in the big one. Which is what we need. Now if we get this puzzle wrong, that's going to release a mutt. And as I say, I don't want to fight him. Her, sorry. Again, you need to actually go into your inventory and select the wine skin. Put the water in there. Okay, so Amut is still safely in her cage. She didn't get to send us to Port Purgatory today. And there is a large med pack in this niche here. Okay, so go ahead and pull this releases the gem here and you just heard that boom open so let's roll and drop into the water heal our screen okay so our third combination is down arrow again and it's basically red yellow blue so we'll go ahead and pop that combination in. Hope Lara doesn't get hopped and put on fire again. Uh. And say, the designer of this level was really crafty with his puzzles. He has uh, made a really tricky level. If you're playing this for the first time and not sure what you're doing, you will die a lot. That it is inevitable, you will die a lot. This is, some of the, the puzzles are really obvious what you need to do, other ones are not. So if you don't pay attention to that Sphinx map or don't find it, you are going to have a bit of a hard time. And I'd say instant death for most of these traps, so uh, yeah, my recommendation is save it a lot. Okay, so we've just now come into another room 
all these doors have moon phase combinations over it and you've got your trap door there so you need to pay attention to these moon phases but if you look at your sphinx's map you will notice that you need to go into this door first this door second this door third that door fourth and then that door fifth okay now all these levers on here all have a single moon phase so that's basically indicating which switch you need so on door number one we have moon phase one three and four so we need switches one three and four open now switch number two is the one directly opposite so we need to pull all the other switches now you will also notice to Lara's left here is a compass this is a clue this is basically telling you you need to use your compass to figure out which door is which you need to look at the sphinx's map which gives you north south east and west direction yeah, as i've already played i've already done that hard reading so okay come here and we'll just have a little look over this barrier you see that there is a uh, mirror here and it's basically showing you that above this red water which is instant death um, there are platforms that have fire on them and there are some tiles which are safe and if you come around here you'll find your binoculars this is another hint this is telling you you need to use your binoculars to transgress through this puzzle so if we look in the mirror you can see that the tile directly in front of Lara is safe, the tile to the left and forward of that is safe and the raised tile is safe. All these other tiles have a flame on them. But now let's pull out our binoculars and look into this corner over here. Now we can see two sides of that wall. On the left hand side there is nothing on the wall. On the right hand side we can see those little look like dots from over here but that's basically telling you there is a ladder that is hidden away. So let's go ahead and jump over here. It does look for an instant that Lara's going to die, her legs dangle in the liquid, but you are safe. She's hit the ladder, just climb up as far as this second red line, get Lara's feet on this red line, and then just do a backwards flip. Okay, I'm going to save it here because we do have to do a times run, and as we are over fiery platforms and acid liquid, and there's also a couple of spike traps there. <laughs> and a flaming pedestal with your item on it so yeah this is a room of death so uh, you want to go careful basically the aim of this is to pull that switch jump back turn around and head straight down this middle path onto that first platform veer to the left jump again and then grab that uh, can of gasoline amazing it's not exploded so let's give this a go pull up there. Now as with all TRLEs, the uh, timings on these are really short, they're just going to burst into flames again, yeah, so that's how quick you have to be, I'm going to go ahead and save it now that I've got that cherry can, and as I say, you don't want to stand on any of these spike tiles, okay, so I need to find my platform to drop off onto is this one here and then hop across this is going to spawn a ninja he is going to deflect bullets so just allow him to come in a bit put your guns away when he tries to deflect you and Now, if you manage to get straight onto that tile from dropping down from there, you won't spawn him. He won't come at you. But this is a uh, 
walkthrough. We're going to do all kills as much as we can anyway. Okay, so that's that room done. We don't need to go back in there anymore. We've got the jerry can. That's it. So now for door number two, which is the left of door number one. We need moon phases two, three, and four. Basically, we're going to pull moon phase two. And we're going to go around to the left and pull up moon phase one. Okay, before we go into here, I'm just going to say it again and we're going to get out our shotgun. As soon as we run in here, we're going to get ambushed by two dogs and two ninjas. I'm going to take these out as quickly as we can. Okay, so that's one ninja. There is a med pack right here in the room when you enter, but sometimes these guys pinch it and um, if they pinch it you're not going to find it again, it's gone. So uh, it's up to you whether you risk life and death for a med pack, <laughs> it's only a little one so that you don't actually need it. Okay, so if we go around this library we will see that there's two pyramids back here. One of them has a bag of sand. And the other one has a guardian key. Yes, I said the guardian, quaking bit. Um, also, we've got two colored blocks, but you can see this floor is sinking as Lara steps on it. So we can't actually move those blocks at all at the moment. There is also a ladder, but the grate is closed. There's not much we can do in this room for, for just now, but we do need an item from here. So go ahead and pull this switch. Then we've got the gate, great just here, drop down, and there is another guardian key. And that's showing you which door you need to go through next. Okay, so now that we've got the guardian key, we can go ahead and hop back up. Now, I am going to flip that switch again before we leave. This is going to be made apparent a little bit later on. But if you did notice down below, there are some coloured tiles. There's a yellow and a red one. So that should give you a clear decipher as to what we need to do in here later on. So for now, let's go back into the main room. And take a look at door number three. So we need one, two, and four. That's number three, so we'll go ahead and pull that up. Go around to the left and pull, uh, everyone, pull number one. Okay, and then we see the little receptacle for the guardian key. This door is currently closed. We put the guardian key in there. Okay, and we get a type rope from Tomb Raider 5. Now, I'm going to save again because I have noticed that this type rope is a little bit buggy. Lara seems to uh, nearly fall off quite a lot. The best thing I have found is if she tries to fall off to one side, correct her, leave her for two seconds and then proceed forward because if you try and uh, proceed forward straight away, she will lean to the other side again. Also, uh, unlike Tomb Raider 5, if you are consistent with holding your walk button, Lara won't fall off. On this one, you need to also continue holding the action key, because otherwise she will instantly fall off to her death. So, let's give this a go. And almost instantly we are leaning. So I just corrected, give, gave her a second to correct herself, and then proceeded forward. Oh, 
but as I say, she does tend to lean on this quite a bit. This is not my favourite part, I, I will admit. My first playthrough of this, I did end up swearing at the screen quite a lot. But it's really nice to see, you know, elements from uh, two different Tomb Raider games together. And he's made it work, you know, it might be a, a little bit buggy, but he has made it work. And it does present a challenge. Okay. And now the arrow's going to fall off. <laughs> but it's okay, there's a tile there. Okay, we're going to drop down this ladder. Now, in here, there are two gates. And there is also a guardian. And two eyes, so anyone who's played Tomb Raider 4, you know what you've got to do. We've got to get that ball to run into those eyes. We're just going to avoid the Guardian for a minute and just come up here. Now you may think Pascal has uh, been smoking and uh, got to put a few textures in. This is all a purpose. You see the sun there? If you fall down these cracks, you die. And if you look above us, you'll notice floating platforms. That was what the Sphinx map was telling us about earlier. And across the way is a gate. That is the ultimate goal. That is what we need to get the Guardian to open. So, to wake the Guardian up, basically go ahead, pat him on the back, taunt him a little bit. And this is where I do start using a lot of med packs. If he hits you once, you are half dead. If he hits you twice, you are dead. And I caught on fire. Okay guys, I'm back in the Guardian room. Now one quick thing that we'll show you is if Lara has full health and you try and no. use a medpack, she tells you no. There's a good way of conserving medpacks. In the regular games, they don't do that and you can literally waste medpacks. Let's go pat the Guardian on the head again and we'll try this again. I'm going to save it, because if I don't save it, I'll have to do it all again. <laughs> okay, where is he? He's prowling for us out there. Right here. Uh, get out of my way, boy. Okay, sprint, 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 sprint. And roll. And she can't fire again, what the hell? I've never caught on fire before. Okay, he's gonna back up and he's gonna charge him. I say, you do have to take a week bit of force damage in this level, you can't really avoid it. Avoid it. <sighs> okay, that's the last time we have to uh, play with the Guardian. We just have to run past him a couple of times. He's easy enough to avoid. Okay, so be really careful when you come through here, because there are some slope tiles, and if you're not careful, you will run off the edge to your death. And if we climb up these steps, we're going to come to a room that we've sort of seen before. Okay, so we have really clear mission. We just pull the column onto the circle. Now, that is the floor that was in the library before, where the two pedestals 
coloured pedestals are. So basically that column is going to stop that floor from moving up and down and then we can put them on their tiles. That's where we've got the guardian key so it makes sense that you know you get the key to the room from the adjoining room so pull this column back once and then you want to come around to the other side of it and pull it again. Okay, and now that floor isn't going to move when we stand on it. However, we do have to run past the Guardian again, so... Uh, fingers crossed he's in a tame mood. Okay. Now, I don't believe he will follow you into this little room to get to the ladder, but let's not risk it. <laughs> Just climb straight up. I have to do this friggin' type rope again. We will just say it again, just in case. If anyone um, else who's played this level ever manages to successfully get across this type rope without falling or leaning to one side, please leave me a comment. Um, I would be very interested to know. Oh, I thought she was dead then. She glitched into our. That's fine. Okay, so we're back in this room. We now need to go back in here. So, two, three, and four. This lever here is number three. Around the other side, opposite is lever number one. So that now needs to go up. Okay. So let's head back into the library. Now, as I said earlier, we just need to get these two ornaments here down below but if you look you'll notice that they're on the wrong side of each other so we're going to start with the yellow one that's straight back onto the grate or rather push it onto the grate she won't pull it all the way because there's a ledge ah. and now we're going to move it over one tile So pull it back one. And we're going to do quite similar with the red tile, except before we push it onto the grate, we're going to push it along one tile. So that it's on the other side of that yellow one. <sighs> now, those of you who will remember, I pulled that switch back up after I left. That was because this grate would not be up now otherwise. If I hadn't put it back up, this grate would still be down and we wouldn't be able to push these ornaments on there. That's why we pull it back up, it just saves you a little bit of time later on. Okay, so now we need to pull it again. Turn those down the bottom there and just aim to try and fall in the middle of them. Just makes it a bit easier. Now there is also a little space there so if you do mess up you can push the one in there and um, move the other one along but it's just easier doing it right the first time okay so yellow and now uh, red <gasps> mm. 
and jump back up. Now you heard the grate open for this ladder over here, so we'll go ahead and grab this ladder. Climb up to where the grate ended and backflip. Jump over here and head on over here. Now any of you who looked up before would notice the pull switch here and there's one directly opposite. And they're both going to release these two pyramids. Now you can go ahead and grab the bag of sand straight away. You don't actually need it yet. So I'm going to leave it there safe climbing back up. I'm going to jump over to this tile and over to this next balcony. Just two simple hops and then you may think you lost but if you look up you can actually climb up here and jump across the roof to the next ledge. And then if you go to turn the corner, oh no there's a grate in front of us, you can't get there. And if you do look there is a small med pack Oh, uh, sorry, a large med pack over there that you can go claim a bit later. Now, if we run through this room, we get the floating tiles. Now, once again, instant death if you make a single mistake, so recommend you save it. Now, there is a little map to go through this on the Sphinx's map. So, if you follow the instructions for that, you find this tile here, instant death, that tile there, instant death. So we want to go over to this tile first. Now, the shrewd among you will notice this is the guardian room again, so not that you will survive the fall, you will die before he can skew you in his horns. So, hop over to this tile, this is another safe tile. And then straight ahead of you is another safe tile. But straight ahead of that, instant death again. Do you want to go to the left? Aim for this one. It's basically um, trying to trick you in thinking, right, longest path is safest. But then as soon as you turn the corner, it's going to be quickest path is safest, uh, so to speak. So you do really have to be careful which tiles you jump on because if you make a mistake she catches on fire. And there's really no indication from above which is which. So yeah, Sphinx map, definitely something to read. Okay, so now we're going to just hop on this one and we see the door we're aiming for. Now before we go for that, if we, um, the tiles basically that the map tells you to go on is that one there across to the right of that and then avoid that tile by the door and jump straight over but it tells us this one directly ahead of us is instant death it is not it is a secret tile that you can stand on and if we jump over here we're going to go claim a secret two we can see that small ledge there you can stand on that right, okay and then just hop over onto this tile and we see another golden beetle. Okay, I don't like jumps where I can't move the camera angle. <laughs> okay. So now if we run forward and grab this tile we should be safe from fire. Okay, as I say, this is a trick tile, don't jump on that, you will catch on fire, you want to go directly for the door, which is a hop back, run, jump and grab, and she will land in there nicely. I'm going to go ahead and save it, not that we have to do that puzzle again, thank goodness. Okay, and we'll run through here, and there is our police switch. And that opens another guardian key. Don't worry, there's only one guardian in this level, we've already faced him. Okay, but before we go down, let us just hop over to claim that large med pack.
Okay, so now we've got both pyramids open, we're just going to use... That shows you where the guardian key needs to go, that's it, through door number 4, although it's the fifth one we open, so we've not been through there yet. And then we'll run back out. And we've got the bag of sand as well. Okay, so um, just to explain the bag of sand and the water skins, we've got earth and uh, water basically, uh, two elements. So bear that in mind for the next next door. Now we just want to uh, nope, we want that one down. We want that one down. So we need to pull this one. So we're gonna open this door here. So we'll run through here. And if we look down. Apophis is below us. Uh, no, I beg your pardon. Uh, Amut is below us. I don't think there is anything in his cage. I've had a look around and I've not seen anything. But to be honest, I'm not going to risk pissing him off to uh, find out and open the cage. Whatever the item is down there, you don't need it. So, <laughs> Okay, so we run out into this new room. Uh, we can see some scales ahead of us. We can see some spikes. Uh, there's also a door there, and um, if you look down around you, you can see, uh, you can hear some fire, see some water. So that gives you clues to what the next puzzle is. And through here is where we put the guardian key. So we'll go ahead and do that. And that opens this little door, and there's a torch here. So go ahead and grab the torch. Now, I don't know about you, but from my experience of Revelations, if I throw a unlit torch down, I very rarely tend to fire it, find it again. So let's go ahead and light this. Just want to step onto the very corner of the tile so you don't catch on fire. And we'll just go ahead and throw this down for the moment. Okay. Now, around here, if you don't already have 3 litres in your wine skin which I should yes I've already got it you would uh, conveniently be able to get some more water I already have the three liters is why I didn't pour it out again I always recommend if you are unsure make, fill up your wine skins because you can always empty them okay and through here we can see another pull switch in the door opposite now those spikes up there, we're not going to get to where we need to go with those spikes going. But if you notice on the base of the column they're on, there's a switch. This basically just turns them off so you can proceed with the level. So now you can't hear them clanging anymore. So we need to go back up to the top and climb up. Now, what I love most about this level is although it repeats some puzzles, it does continually introduce new elements to the level. So we've now got a swinging pole uh, that Lara can flip on. So you just run, jump, grab, let go, and she will land on this next tile. Now, standing on this tile raises the little block down there. But there is also a block opposite. And this is monkey bars, another new element to the level. So it keeps you guessing. Don't be fooled by the moves that Lara can do at the beginning of the level. You will get continually new different things you can do and you might only use them once but they are there. It's there to fool you so be wary of that. Okay and then standing on this tile raises that one down there. So we'll just go ahead and jump safely off here. Okay so to the observer we can't climb back up with that torch so what we need to do by raising these blocks we have basically invented Lara some jumping uh, platforms which she can now use to climb up so we want to go onto the first tile we raised run and jump onto this block and then run and jump further along to the next one and then if we turn 
The block I used to get down is just high enough for Lara to run and jump to. So it is slow progress, but you know, take it gently, one step at a time, a little hop there. Now, you may think you need to go directly across. Oh shoot. You do not need to go directly across. You cannot reach that block when you cannot reach that balcony. Let's just go ahead and uh, climb back, back up. Oh, what are you doing, Lara? run and jump to this one but just be careful because there is live fire behind you uh, sorry for the new so I'm going to go ahead and save it we are nearing the end of the level now so just run and jump and curve onto that tile and you'll make it nicely now once again you can't run from balcony to balcony you just want to hop over to this one aim for the corner of the tile and then run jump and curve so that she makes it in between the two posts there. Now, you've got three litres of water, you have a bag of sand, and you have some jerry carrot. What are you doing, Laura? Silly. <laughs> okay, so the jerry can needs to go on here. We do give you an unlimited supply of uh, petrol. You have three litres of water. And you tell it's three litres because you've got the three wavy lines goes in there your bag of sand goes on here but, oh no wait you didn't hear a door open that's because you need your torch because the middle one is for light so let's set the fuel on fire get rid of that we don't need that anymore and we will Safety drop down. <sighs> and pull the switch. Which raises a platform in the main room of this area. So we'll go ahead and leave. I'm back up the ladder. You can still hear the guardian moving around, by the way. He can't get you. You don't have to worry about him anymore. <sighs> Bye, Mutt. See you later. little jump into this slope platform, climb up here, turn around, jump up, okay and here is the third gem of Pothis we need, you get your triumphant music, are you doing right? Okay, to get off this platform you need to crouch and basically crawl off because the ledge is too small otherwise. So. That should have opened our little exit grate, which it has. So you just go ahead. I would recommend holding and dropping so that she goes straight. If you run off, you could basically catch yourself on another ledge. Okay, so there's that done. So we'll go over here, turn this flame off. Pop the jewel of Apophis in there. Go ahead and pull that switch. Okay, I'm not 100% sure what triggers it, but I'm going to go ahead before I put the third gem in and just check. 
these rooms real quick because basically this area um, morphs after a certain point in the game yeah these areas are exactly the same but this third door should have a secret in it now as you can see down below you there is no floor we'll crawl in here and get the med pack I think it's basically when you come off the third floor room opposed to when you put the third jewel in we we'll grab the large med pack and go over here and we'll grab the last secret of the game Okay, so crawl back out. You're gonna glitch for me again, Laura. There we go. I say sometimes she glitches with the crawling around the secrets, but just keep moving her about and eventually she'll um, duck down as she needs to. Okay, so let's go put this third gem in. Okay, so let's open that grate in the water. So basically the aim of the game now is just go run out of here into that water and we are very near the end of the level <laughs> now I've not found anything in this water I tend to just go straight if I am wrong uh, I do apologize you can always leave me a comment but this passageway seems a little bit too lean to have any sort of hidden items in it. You barely uh, make it on your breath, so um, my advice would be near the end of the level, you don't really need any items if there are any hidden in here. I don't think there are any scrolled away. So just keep following the passage. You can see already half my health, is, uh, half my breath is gone, so if you are exploring in there, just be mindful of that. Okay. Now, you see those little alcoves and stuff here? There's nothing in them. That's the one you came out of. Nothing in these two. So, just swim up. And climb up. I don't know why I'm drawing my pistols. There's no one needs to put them away. Okay, so you basically come out into a uh, quite large area. <laughs> And uh, there's nothing as far as I can tell behind any of these columns. But if you notice around here, this is the door. This ends the level pretty much. There is a little receptacle for our third bloody key. And if we look up here, we see that we can get up there as well. So, what you need to do is come around this pillar here. And up in this corner, you can actually get up. Oh, uh, that one. And we can do a special little jump here. Now, on my live stream, this would take me a couple of tries because it is a bit of a tricky one to angle yourself up in. So basically, you want to try and get as far into this corner as you can, face this wall. Jump back, not jump into a wall, Lara. Okay, let's go for the middle of the wall instead. Jump forward, grab this tile. This is a slidey ledge, so you want to go as far left as you can. Then climb up, jump as she slides, and veer to the left and fall off. Give it one more go. Okay, so jump back, jump forward, grab, slide and veer, and save. 
Okay, now that we're on here, you can run and jump to this tile. So just run and jump and grab. I haven't figured out a way of getting on that roof. I don't think there's anything on there. So I'm going to ignore it. And you cannot make this jump. This is four tiles. It's too far. So what you need to do is you need to run and jump to this slopey ledge. Veer a little. Grab the ledge. And then shimmy across. Now, you do get this little block here to tell you when you are in line, but basically you just want to go four tiles, pull up, and backflip. And then we're aiming for this break in the roof. You don't want to fall off here, you will die. Okay, and then you are, again, doing a little weird jump. And you can claim the guardian key. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and fall in the water because it's the safest way down. <laughs> Larry, soaking wet. And we'll go ahead and put the guardian key into the receptacle. Let's open these uh, pretty mosaic doors. Okay, and this is the end of the level. You get Lara's music. You basically just run to the gondola. And there you go. This has been Lady Labyrinth on the tutorial of the Egyptian Dream TRLE. Uh, please do go check out the TRLE website and download for yourself. It's an awesome level and do check out the tutorial as well. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again in my next video.